so my name's Steve Mussel. I run a company called Nice Smile, and um, I've been doing that since 2003. Prior to that, um, I, I did everything you do as a photographer, photograph everything, had a number of studios, and, and, and tried everything. And I'll go through a little bit of the history. Um, this is a, a, a photo of some of our likely lads and ladies who work with us. Um, the good-looking one in the middle uh, needs no introduction. So this is, hang on, is this, a, ah, this is our fancy little clip. Is this the actual video? Just a little clip about what we do. On other systems, you can go in and see the pictures and you can order things, but you're not really guided in a way that maximizes sales, which is what Got Photo have invested a lot of time and energy into. So I really do trust them to give a good experience to the parents. Uh, it's a little bit like on Amazon. When you go into Amazon, a lot of time has been invested in, in trying to encourage people to spend more. Customers who bought this also bought that. Uh, it's that sort of idea within Got Photo. So that's a still from, the, from that particular little girl's shoot. Um, anyone know what the background is? No, but it's similar. Tin foil. Quite cheap, but if you use a, a three or four rolls a, a day, it, get, it adds up, you know. Um, so just being up here doesn't mean I've got all my ducks in order. I'm still trying to do a, a sort an awful lot of things out and I'm using the Got Photo system. There's a lot in there to, to, to experiment with and get wrong and then try to get right. Uh, early on, we had an idea that maybe if we could come up with some really interesting school groups, we could actually win new clients because um, if we wow them with the school groups and they bring us in for the school groups, uh, they might actually then want us for the, the individuals where we really make the money. So even if we don't make a fortune on the school groups, we'll get the individuals later. So that was our plan. So with that in mind, we, we came up with a load of ideas. We even got some of our staff to think up uh, ideas and promised them cash if the school actually adopted it. Um, and um, they never stopped reminding me that was my idea under a quid. So um, here's a few ideas, and while we're looking at them, I'll give you an idea of how we do them. Um, some of them, by the way, just don't work in the terms of schools not liking them, but this one does seem to work. Um, people like it um, because you can put the name of the school in there. Um, it's not really difficult. It's just quite lengthy to actually make that afterwards. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about how we do that later. Um, just quickly, what we do, I don't, I don't know if you can see the reflection down below, but that is actually a real reflection, not a Photoshop reflection. If you've ever tried to make a 3D object reflected, you'll realize it, it doesn't sort of work. It, it's, it's fine for two-dimensional things like the letters. You can just flip them, uh, but you can't flip people because it just doesn't work. So you've got to actually have bits of black perspex on the floor, which is what we do for this one. In fact, bits of black perspex are great for lots of, of our ideas. You can use white perspex as well instead of white paper, and it gives a little reflection, just a little extra touch to make your photos look that bit more classy. So um, I've spent a bit of time on this one because I like it, and the customer seems to like it, and they sell pretty well. By the way, when you're doing this one, it's helpful to just literally draw it in advance with all the, uh, uh, just a little, I should have taken one of my drawings, but I drew this out beforehand roughly so that when you're shooting it, you know where to put people. Um, rather than just later on when you're editing, think, oh gosh, where do I put them? So um, this is another idea. Uh, we realized, we thought we could buy a blow-up sofa. You can't buy a blow-up sofa that looks like that. It looks like something uh, from a kid's playground normally, but that is a proper sofa. The problem is when people order it, you've got to pay 200 quid to rent it every time. Um, so we're working on that one. But that's one sofa, obviously, two times, so you don't have to have two sofas. Um, also, it's not a typical class size. Your typical class size is 30-odd, but it looks nicer with that number. Um, 
this one is very popular um, and it's quite easy to do. Normally done in two halves, this time it's being done in one. If you've got a wide enough white background, and by the way, I think you should have one, you should make one or, or, or because we had to make our own white backgrounds out of huge bits of white material. It's quite good to have them, just stick them in a big bag and then you can do shots like this in one shot rather than make them in two shots. Um, we bought a whole load of cardboard letters and created this shot and, and some schools have gone for this. Um, it's just good, I think, to have a repertoire. I invented this and I haven't got my 100 quid because no one's ordered it yet, but I thought it was good. Again, this one, pound and umbrellas. So just ideas, you can nick the ideas, uh, it, feel free. Um, actually, not many people go for this, but I put it in there. A as we go on, the ideas get more and more wacky um, and more and more crazy. This one, quite easy, actually, just buy a, um, a tank of gas and a load of balloons. Just don't do it outdoors. Take it from me. I've tried it. Um, with baskets, um, uh, just a variation on that. Have you ever tried this? Get a ladder, just climb up a ladder and photograph the kids looking up. We tried it in different ways. By the way, if you try this and you want to get that pattern, it's literally impossible unless you put bits of gaffer tape on the floor for them to stand on. You just cannot get them to keep their feet still. Forget it. But if you put a diamond shape, uh, little dots, they will stand still. You just say, get on the tape. And they suddenly snap into shape. It's brilliant. It's like a miracle. Um, another idea, we haven't done it in practice. It, by the way, to, to get these examples, the only way to do it was to actually hire a load of models, which we did for free. Um, so if you want examples of groups, you know how hard it is because you've got to get 30 permissions. We did a little campaign in um, Star Now. And we got stack loads of models for free, and we just give them photos. So. There's another idea. A, a sports group, another sports group. That was my wife's idea. Well, I like it. I don't know about everyone else. A, a traditional group, just to prove we can do normal groups. Um, this one is quite nice because, uh, but it works well if it's not a uniform group, you know, just without school uniform. This one, as I say, the further back in time we go, the more mental my ideas were. But um, we did this for one school, I think about, and I got all these windows made by a joiner, cost an arm and a leg. But the school did buy loads, the, the parents bought loads, so it was good. Um, this is probably my most outlandish idea. I've taken it off my list of options now because it's too stressful to actually do it. Plus, some of the parents said that they, it made them dizzy when they looked at it and they didn't know which way to put it. I even thought of having a, a little motor behind that rotated it, but it never got off the ground. Um, here's a few individual ideas. Um, oh, by the way, I've, I missed loads of my notes out. I was supposed to say a little bit about ha ha what I'll just go back in the notes just quickly to say uh, where it all started off for me. Now, when I was 12, my dad gave me 20 quid, which was so long ago that 20 quid actually could buy you something then. And um, I bought my first camera and I, I got hooked on photography then. Um, and I actually got trained by Pixie Photo, who are maybe looked down upon by the pros, but actually they did a, a, a six week training course, which was amazing, showed me how to pose babies and things like that. And it stood me in good stead. Um, we opened our first studio in, in 1986. It's going back some time. And we used to do families. Now, I don't know if anyone's got a studio, but looking at a blank diary is frightening at the beginning of the week. So when we discovered schools and nurseries, we realized this repeat element was really handy. So that's how we started off in the nurseries and schools business. And now we've got a database of schools and parents. We can actually go backwards in, and go and, and attract the parents back in and do family shoots that way, even though we don't any longer have a studio. But you can rent one. So if you're doing schools, don't ignore your database because you can use it, use it to, to get other work. 
Um, okay, so let's look at some individual examples. Now, this was taken by one of our photographers, Mike. I wish I'd taken it because it's a, it's a nice one. Uh, it sort of epitomizes what I want to achieve um, from what we might call natural school photography. And frankly, uh, if you can persuade a school to go for this option, you do make a lot more money than the normal one, especially if they haven't tried this, because people are refreshed by it. So they want something. So there's another example. Uh, go back. Um, there's a few examples of this idea. Um, this is our tin foil again. Good thing about that is you can put any color gel on it that you like, um, and it becomes a different background. There's a di uh, and you can put two different colors. This, uh, this wasn't done with tin foil. Who knows how I did this one? Come on. Okay, just fairy lights. Um, and ambient, we were just using the modeling light on the softbox. The problem is I don't really recommend it because you can get issues, you know, if the, 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 sun, the sun comes out and goes in, you get different exposure problems. I just put this in because I think she looks sweet. This is a, a traditional example going back. Uh, this was taken ages ago. I think this guy's probably about 55 now. Uh, but a grey background can't beat it. Brother and sister idea, just something different. Put one behind, then swap them around. Um, okay, so let's find out where I am on the notes now. This is a, a this is what we do a lot with nurseries. We just sit the kid at a table, put the load of pens and stuff in front of them, or it could be toys, and we just let them get on with it. And there's, we've got a whole series of ideas, which I'll show you in a minute, that you can do in that one position. You could opt to run around at the nursery after individual children, but you've got a couple of problems. One, you might forget who you've done and who you haven't done. Um, and secondly, you've got a lot of exposure and color issues. If you want to keep it simple, then you can go for this idea, where, uh, and I'll show you the lighting diagram in a minute. So, oh, sorry. A few ideas. And, and literally thousands of these photos every every uh, year. <laughs> and sometimes we have an entertainer. Problem is entertainers cost a bit extra money, but some jobs might be worth it. If you've got someone that you know who's a bit of a loon, uh, you can get them to clown around. And I'm telling you, when you're using wide apertures, you probably know that focusing and recomposing and entertaining is a bit of a tall order. So we do sometimes have entertainers. Um, I have recently got this, which makes the job easier because it's got eye focus in it. It's the Sony A7, A7R3. This is what happens when you confiscate a small person's bubbles. I just put it in because I like it. And this was, uh, you know, probably the grumpiest kid we ever had to deal with, and we actually cracked it. There is a sense of victory when you crack a smile from someone like that. This is going back to the early days when we used to use film, and actually this is a, a film image. So is that. But so we have been doing this style actually for since before digital. Back to digital again, a few ideas, a very close-up crop. This is quite recent, actually, this one. Um, outdoor shots, a few different ideas. Uh, we call this vintage. Um, if ever we s tell the photographers they've got to do this, they always dread it because it's extra work for them um, getting them dressed. I'm still not sure if it's a good idea or not, but it's something you can try. I, I do like it. It makes a change. I, I like to have a, a variety. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, how to get the maximum variety without having to move the child. Because every time you move the child, it's more effort and time. So you want to move the child as minimum times as possible, but get the maximum number of, of photos. Um, so let's have a little look. This is an example where we had a nursery where there were two, two styles. 
sometimes we do more than one style in the nursery. Not a bad idea because the parent isn't, if they don't like the unposed, then at least there's a slightly more posed one. In this case, there's, there is a posed version and an un, a less posed version. So let's have a look at them. Um, maybe this is a few more photos than usual because this kid was a, a sort of model for us. But get, and I'm not saying these are the best photos in the world, but it just gives you an idea of what you might be able to do. Um, uh, the desk, a uh, uh, tabletop setup. And they're not necessarily my favorite pictures, but you can see how you can do these quite quickly and you have to do them in four minutes. Four minutes to get all these pictures. I can't remember how many, I I'm supposed to be counting, there's about about 10 photos there. And then this is the tin foil ones. My basic idea is to overwhelm the parent a little bit. I want, to, I want them to like them all and think, oh gosh, I'll just download them all and, and get the top package. I shoot actually at full aperture most of the time. It's 1.4. Uh, you can't do that really unless you're using one of these things. Okay, so all those pictures we try and do in about four minutes. That might be a few more than usual. Here's a school shoot. Okay, so from a school, uh, a similar thing where there's just one style and you've only got two minutes. And I, um, we're going to count these as we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven shots in, in, in two minutes, and then you've got to photograph the card as well. Um, so let me just check. Okay, so we can talk through a couple of these um, techniques. So I, as I say, I use the Sony for so I can get the eye focus, because most of what we do now is a full aperture. Um, Nikon have just brought out uh, an eye focus thing as well, which is, is quite good. I just tested it. Um, we use um, large softbox. There's a diagram. I'll come back to that in a moment. So we're emulating the daylight. I, I tend to use the Pixar Pro lights because they're battery operated. You've got no wires to trip over. Uh, it cuts down the setting up time quite a lot. Um, and there's no, uh, we used to have a lot of problems with the receivers. Now they're built in, so that's great. Uh, also pretty reliable and cheaper than Profoto. Well, everything's cheaper than Profoto, yeah. <laughs> so um, we looked at the number of photos, try and take about 10, 15 photos. It, it, it tends to be a, a, a sweet spot. Um, if you can use more than one style, so much the better. Uh, if you've got uh, the budget on the job, get an entertainer in. It will make life easier for you. Sorry, I keep swapping that. Um, here's the lighting setup. It's really simple. One light to light the background, one light on the cheek, um, and one big softbox. You can also move the camera around here and get a side lit shot with, with minimum effort, but you do need someone here to make them look this way. I, I can't give you a demonstration of that, I that idea at the moment, I, but here's the front on one we saw earlier. You can see the hair light and the background would go a bit dark if it wasn't for the background light. Okay, editing techniques. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about editing. Um, so here's some of the guys that, that we have to do editing. Um, we use editors in the Ukraine. Not everyone edits everything, but we, we do. Um, it helps that I've got a Ukrainian wife. If you haven't got a Ukrainian wife, I could possibly help you out. Um, but that is the connection, really, the, the connection because my wife's Ukrainian. Uh, I can talk a little bit about how you can find editors over in Ukraine because, frankly, it's difficult to make a living in this industry and, and anything you can get to help you, you should get. And, and this is totally legal. Um, and I've got such a great team. It's a real privilege to work with them. It actually makes my life um, really fun. Um, because just to be able to interact with people that are so committed to working, it's hard to find that sort of commitment and um, it's just a joy. I'm absolutely not joking. Um, 
we're talking about a fifth of the cost of UK wages. I know it's probably not politically correct, but I can't afford nine staff in the UK. I literally can't. Um, so, um, now let's just have it. Yeah, we did try. Initially, I realized we needed editors when we started off in India. Problem with India, it's like 0.2 of a megabit per second internet. It's literally unusable. The Philippines is three gigabit. Again, tricky, but not impossible to use. But the work ethic isn't the same as, as Ukraine, which is a very good work ethic. If you don't speak Russian, they're, they're, a lot of them speak a bit of English, and you'll be OK. Um, I'm learning Russian. Uh, so what you can do, just a quick aside, is if you are interested, you literally just find a website in, in Ukraine or any other country that you're interested in, finding editors in place an advert and, and see what happens. When you found people interested, just give them a task to do. Give them all the same task and then see who does it best. Choose from them. That's my little technique for finding staff, uh, particularly editors there. Um, right, OK. So let's have a look what's next. Yeah. At one point, we used to actually convert every image into sepia and black and white and upload the lot. Now. Thankfully, Got Photo actually does that for us. And um, I can just, I think, can I actually? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah OK. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of images. Just this one job, for example, has 4,770 images in it. And if you multiply that by three by doing black and white and sepia, you can see what we're talking about, a huge amount of data. So it's nice that we no longer have to do it. It's automatically done in the system. Um, Here's what, the, um, here's what the parents actually see. So they see the, co the color. Then they see the black and white. Um, and then the sepia version. So if they think, oh, I don't want them, they don't have to look through everything. And they're not all muddled up like they used to be in our other system. Um, yeah. Um, I just put this in here because there was one particular job where a client asked us, can we have colorful backgrounds? And the, the, the f I told the photographers to use gels on the background. Well, they didn't. They forgot. And I just thought, I wonder if we can do this in Lightroom. And the editor just did all six, uh, maybe 1,200 images, added this color. And that's something that would take you a long time. But we had the facility to do it. So it makes it quite nice. No, I quite like the colors. Um, it's good to get data. It's good to have data in your system. Make sure whatever system you've got, you can get data out of it. Um, this is just one page of absolutely loads of pages of statistics that we've got in our system that shows us, you know, for example, how many people have actually ordered um, out of the total number that could have ordered. Um, and what your average order is and what your total revenue is. So it's good to be able to get data out of your system. So let's talk a little bit about how we maximize the take up. What is take up? When I say take up, I'm talking about you don't want to take a load of pictures and no one ever even logs in or, or no one ever orders. That's a right pain and always disappointing if you've done that work and they don't even order. How do we maximize it? Well, it, it's good to have a system that at least reminds people to order, at least emails them to order. In the past, we didn't have that. Now we have got that. So I'm very grateful that. Uh, when the time period is over for the free postage, because we do a week of free postage, when that is over, suddenly, I, or nearly over, we see a load of people ordering because they're getting emails to say, look, you're going to miss out on free postage. It's nice because I haven't done anything. I've just waited for it to automatically happen. And the other thing that happens is another peak when they get an email to say, you know, we're going to archive, as if archiving is the end of the absolute world. They suddenly all order. Even if they, c they can unarchive it if they want, they can phone us, in, but they're panic and they all order. So it's great to have these automatic reminders and also a system of reminding those that have never even logged in. We do that through a paper system. So we actually literally print out um, a bit like old fashioned proof cards and send them to the school if they've never logged in at all. Because if they haven't logged in at all, we haven't got their email and we can't contact them. That is that little section, that percentage uh, that's the problem. I would like to be able to nail that. and. In school photography, it's tricky, unless you could get the emails from the school, and you can't. Um, also, it's great to be able to run campaigns with your database. As your database grows, when it gets to thousands, it's like magic when you suddenly send out a campaign near Christmas saying, 
you know, um, order pictures for grandma or something, suddenly loads of people actually do order photos and spend money. And I was shocked last Christmas. It's the first time I'd actually done it. And I was thinking, God, why didn't I do this before? And maybe I couldn't do it before on a different system. But now I've captured all those names, all those emails, and can just email them out at various times of year, you know, whatever it is, Easter, Mother's Day, this sort of thing. And actually people do spend for the sake of one email. Uh, and it doesn't take that long to write the email. You've got to write a good one, but it's really important to be able to do that. Um, and of course, if you're doing families, family photos, you can email them about that. Uh, that's what I'm working on at the moment. So um, I've got a feeling I've missed out loads of slides, but um, maybe I haven't. Has anyone got any questions? Because um, I've probably missed stuff out. Come on, someone ask me a question. Fine. I must, maybe I did a good job. Thank you. OK. Well, I'll be around for a while. And then if anyone wants to grab me, feel free. And I'll try and help. If I can pass any tips on, I mean, that's the whole point. If I can help you out at all, I will. Thank you.